Hello everyone. Um, I wanted to make a quick video for you um, to help you with graphing rational functions. Um, so in order to graph rational functions, the first thing that you're going to do is identify your holes and your vertical asymptotes and your x-intercepts. Um, we went through how to do that in class today. So you will um, basically factor top, factor bottom, the holes come from canceling, the vertical asymptotes come from where your numerator is equal to zero, or sorry, where your denominator is equal to zero. Sorry, vertical asymptotes come from the denominator equaling zero, and x-intercepts come from the top equaling zero um, after any cancellation. So once you find your holes, vertical asymptotes, and x-intercepts, um, the next thing you need to do is identify your horizontal and slant asymptotes. Uh, you're going to do that from your end behavior fraction. Um, we talked in class today about how to set up your end behavior fraction and simplify it. And then how to identify your horizontal and slant asymptotes from those. Um, I also posted um, another video um, with some examples to walk you through that process. Um, to get your um, horizontal and slant asymptotes from um, your equation. So basically, you're going to find all of those things, um, and then you'll put all of them on a graph, and you're going to connect the dots. Um, your asymptotes will act as guides, so you know where your graph is going. Um, so kind of connect dots and go to your asymptotes. Um, if you are unsure, you can always plot more points um, by picking any x value you want that's not already a hole, a vertical asymptote, or an x-intercept, um, and plug that function or plug that value into your simplified rational function. And the y value that you get out of that um, gives you an ordered pair, right? X, y um, that you can plot on your graph to give you more points, and you can plug you can plug in as many of those as you want to help you kind of connect the dots and see the shape of the graph. Um, there's one um, topic in Alex that's going to want you to identify at least two points um, on, in each section of your graph. Um, what I mean by that is it's going to want at least two points on either side of every vertical asymptote. Um, so you might need to plug in a couple of extra points there if you need to. Um, your x-intercepts and your holes count as points. Um, I realize that a hole isn't a point there, but your, your function is still going to have to go through where that hole is. Okay, so let's actually do some examples of this. Um, I'm going to come back to number one. Number one is kind of um, unorthodox. It's not your typical rational function, so we're going to come back to number one. Um, in just a minute. Let's start with number two here. Okay, so in order to graph this rational function, negative 3x squared minus 15x all over x squared plus 7x plus 10, we first need to factor everything on the top and the bottom to identify holes, vertical asymptotes, and x-intercepts. So on the top, we can factor out a common factor and negative 3x is our greatest common factor up here. When we factor that out, we get x plus 5. And in our denominator, we have a trinomial, three pieces, and our leading coefficient is a 1. So that makes life easy. We're going to find two numbers that multiply to positive 10. Those same two numbers need to add to positive 7. Those two numbers are positive 2 and positive 5. Since our leading coefficient is 1, we can just pop those numbers into parentheses with x's. And we're factored. So now that we've factored top and bottom, you will notice we have a common factor on the top and the bottom. That's going to create a hole. So I'm going to make a note of that. I have a hole at x equals negative 5. Now that I've made a note of that, go ahead and cancel and simplify. So now we're going to use this simplified function for the rest of the problem. Basically, once you cancel that hole, 
um, what's left tells you what the shape of the graph looks like. Um, the original function that we had is going to look exactly like this one, except with that extra hole in it. Um, and so basically to find the y coordinate of our hole, because a hole is an ordered pair, we have an x coordinate, we just need a y coordinate. So to get y, we're gonna take x and we're going to plug it into our simplified function here. So if I take x equals negative five and plug it into my simplified function, I'm going to get that y is equal to negative three times negative five divided by negative five plus two. So that means y is gonna be 15 divided by negative three which is negative five. That means overall, I have a whole at the ordered pair negative five, negative five. All right, and now we can identify vertical asymptotes and x-intercepts using our simplified version. Vertical asymptotes happen where the bottom is equal to zero, so we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two. When we set our denominator equal to zero and solve for x, and make sure you write your vertical asymptote as an equation of a line. And our x-intercepts, you're gonna set the numerator equal to zero and solve for x. So x equals zero is our x-intercept. That's where, where our x-intercept happens, where we cross the x-axis. That means the ordered pair zero, zero is our x-intercept. When x is zero, y is zero. All right, so we found holes, vertical asymptotes, and x-intercepts. Now we just need to figure out whether we have slant or horizontal asymptotes or neither one. Um, in order to figure that out, we are going to have to identify our end behavior fraction. And our end behavior fraction is the leading term on top divided by leading term on the bottom. The bully on top is negative 3x squared. And the bully on the bottom is x squared. So leading term on top over leading term on the bottom. Go ahead and simplify that. Your x squareds cancel and you get negative 3. So what that means is at our ends, our function acts like y equals negative three at the end, which means we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative three. All right, now that we have all of this information, we just need to put it on a graph and fill in our, uh, our graph. Okay, so we have a hole at negative five, negative five. Two, five, one, two, three, four, five. And we'll put an open circle down here at negative five, negative five. That's where our hole's gonna go. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two. There's our vertical asymptote. We have an x-intercept at zero, zero. There is our x-intercept. And we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative three. So we have, there's our y, um, our horizontal asymptote at y equals negative three. Okay, so at this point, um, we just have to figure out what our graph looks like. Now, I know that my function's going to have to approach my vertical asymptote and I can't cross that and I have to approach my horizontal asymptote at the ends. So basically, since I have a point here, I know that I have to go to my horizontal asymptote, so I'm gonna do something like this. And I also know that I have to approach my vertical asymptote, so I'm gonna do something like this. If you are unsure at all about why it looks like that, we can always pick extra points to get extra ordered pairs. Um, so for instance, if you wanted an extra ordered pair to figure out what this thing looks like, maybe we'll pick x equals one just to figure out um, an extra point. Um, and again, you wanna pick an x value that's not already at a hole 
a vertical asymptote or an x intercept. x equals one is none of those, so I can pick, plug that in and see what happens. Um, so I'm going to take x equals one and plug it into my simplified function, and I'm going to get that y is equal to negative three times one divided by one plus two. Negative three divided by three is negative one. That means I have a point at one negative one on my graph. So I can always go to one negative one, add an extra point, which can help you figure out what this looks like. You can kind of connect your dots. That'll kind of start you on the path and then go to your asymptote from there. And again, you can start at this point, move back up to this one, and then go to your asymptote from there. I'm not looking for perfection with this. I just want the general shape of the graph. Again, so we've got this um, hole down here. If you're not sure what your graph looks like, let's pick um, an extra x value. How about x equals negative 3? That's not already um, a hole and vertical asymptote or an x-intercept, and um, it's on the left side of my asymptote, so it'll help me fill in what's happening on the left side. So if x equals negative 3, I'm going to plug that into my simplified version, and I get negative 3 times negative 3 divided by negative 3 plus 2, and that's going to be 9 divided by negative 1, that's negative 9. So I have an ordered pair at negative 3, negative 9. So let's see, I'm at negative 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have an ordered pair at negative 3, negative 9. And so that can help you fill in your graph. You're going to start here, connect your dots, and then go to your asymptotes. Again, you can start here, connect your dots, and then go to your asymptotes. Having that extra point can kind of give you a place to start to connect your dots so you're moving in the right direction and you can kind of see where the graph's going to go from there. So this is what this rational function looks like. All right, let's come back up to number one. Um, again, this one's a little bit unorthodox, but our process is going to start the same. Um, we're going to find our holes, our vertical asymptotes, and our x-intercepts. So, oh, not sure what happened there. All right, let's try this again. So we're going to factor top and bottom. Bottom's already factored for me. We just got to factor the top. I need two things that multiply to positive 2, add to negative 3. That's going to be negative 2 and negative 1. My leading coefficient is 1 here, so I can take those numbers and put them into parentheses with x's. Okay, we have a common factor here. What does that mean? That means we have a hole. Our hole happens at x equals 2, the x value that makes that factor equal to 0. So I have a hole at x equals 2. I've made a note of that, so let's go ahead and cancel that factor and simplify our rational function. Now, what's a little bit unorthodox about this guy is that this simplifies to something that's nice. This isn't a rational function anymore. I'm left with x minus 1. Um, that's a linear function. That, that looks like y equals mx plus b. And basically, once we canceled our whole, we're left with a line. And what that means is that this rational function that we were given looks just like y equals x minus 1, except it has a whole where x equals 2. Um, so basically, we just have to graph y equals x minus 1 and put our whole in there. Um, so our whole, let's figure out the ordered pair that where this is going to be. Um, to get my y value, I'm going to take x equals 2 and plug it into my simplified function. That means y is going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1. So I have a hole at 2, 1. And I know that the graph of this original function that we have is going to look just like y equals x minus 1, but with that hole added. 
So we can go ahead and do that. Y equals X minus one, that is Y equals MX plus B. Our slope is one, which is one over one. That's our rise over our run. And our B value is negative one, which means our Y intercept is zero negative one. So remember to graph something like this. We're gonna go to zero negative one and start with our Y intercept. And then we're gonna use our slope to rise one and run one from there to get a second point. And then we can connect those with a nice solid line. Um, and don't forget to put your hole in there. We have a hole at two, one. So I'm gonna to go to X equals two, Y equals one. And I'm going to put my open circle for my hole there. And this function is going to look just like the line y equals x minus 1, except with this hole here at 2, 1. Um, and just to um, kind of connect this for you, um, if you didn't notice that right away, you can continue on with our process. Um, notice our denominator here is one after we simplify this. So we have no vertical asymptotes at all because one is never gonna equal zero. And our x-intercepts are going to be where the numerator is equal to zero. So we're gonna set x minus one equal to zero. And that means x equals one is our x-intercept. So we have an ordered pair at one zero and notice that x-intercept is right here at one zero. And furthermore, if you are looking for your horizontal and slant asymptotes, you would use your end behavior fraction. And you would do the leading term on top, which is x squared, divided by our leading term on the bottom, and we would get x. That means, um, because this is linear, that means our equation has um, linear end behavior, which means we have a slant asymptote. You could complete your polynomial long division. I'm just gonna rock through this real quick. Okay. And basically what happens here is that our slant asymptote is y equals x minus one. Um, the weird thing here is that that slant asymptote is actually the same as my function itself. Um, and this is kind of a, a weird thing where um, the, the slant asymptote isn't technically an asymptote because we're right on top of it. Um, and that's because our function is the line y equals x minus one. Um, but kind of these, the process still jibes. Um, you just gotta be careful because if this simplifies to a linear function, um, it's just that line. So again, you don't have to do all of this extra work. Uh, once you realize that this is going to look like the line, go ahead and plot it and just don't forget to put your hole back in. That's kind of the big thing here. All right, so that's how we graph a rational function. Um, if you have to pick one out of a lineup, you're going to start the way that we always start. You are going to identify your vertical asymptotes, your x-intercepts, your holes, and your horizontal or slant asymptotes. You're going to start to identify all of these things. Um, so let's do that here real quick. So we're gonna get a 2x over x plus three times x minus three. Okay, so since we factor this way in this function, nothing cancels, so we have no holes at all. Our vertical asymptotes are where the bottom equals zero, so we'll have one at x equals negative three. We'll also have one at x equals positive three. And we're gonna have an x-intercept where the top is equal to zero which means we're gonna have an x-intercept at x equals zero. Zero, zero is our x-intercept here. And to find our horizontal or slant asymptotes, we're gonna start with our end behavior fraction and do leading term on top, which is two x 
divided by leading term on the bottom, which is x squared, and we're going to simplify that. The two stays on the top. That one x on the top cancels one x on the bottom, and we still have one left down there. So our end behavior fraction looks like two over x. As x goes to infinity and we go to our ends, two over x goes to zero. If you divide two by bigger and bigger numbers, this thing is getting close to zero. And that means we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, so we have all of this stuff. And now we just have to look at our graphs and see which graphs have all of these things. Okay, so I need vertical asymptotes at x equals negative three and x equals positive three. Uh, this one has um, graph A has interest, or sorry, has vertical asymptotes at negative four and negative one. That's not what we need. Graph B is what we need, negative three and three. C has the correct vertical asymptotes. D has the correct vertical asymptotes, but E and F have those wrong vertical asymptotes. So we're just gonna kind of go process of elimination here. And we need an X intercept at zero, zero. That means we need to cross the X axis at the origin. So graph B does in fact go through the ordered pair zero, zero. So that's still in the running. Graph C does not go through the ordered pair zero, zero. So that can't be an option. And graph D, again, does not go through zero, zero. That's not an option. Graph B is the correct answer here. Just a heads up, um, sometimes you will get, um, you'll use all of these um, characteristics to eliminate graphs. You might still have two graphs left that have all of these things correct. If that's the case, you're going to get an extra point to help you. You'll choose any x value that's not already a vertical asymptote, an x-intercept, or um, a hole, and you'll plug it into your simplified function. You'll get your y value out, and you will make sure that that ordered pair x, y appears on the correct graph. Um, you'll, you'll really only have to, to pick one point, and that will make clear to you which is the correct graph and which is the incorrect graph. Okay, and one last thing here, number two, write the equation of a rational function with x-intercepts of zero, zero, and negative one, zero, a hole at x equals three, and a vertical asymptote at x equals five. Hmm, so we're given some information and we have to write the equation of a function. Okay, well, it's a rational function, so you can call it whatever you want, but it's gonna be a fraction with variables in it because that's what a rational function is. And to start here, let's start with the whole. I find that this is the easiest one for, um, for people to kind of start making this leap. If we have a whole at x equals three, what would need to happen in this function to have a whole at x equals three? Well, we would need to have a common factor on the top and bottom that canceled. And in order for our whole to be at x equals three, what would that factor need to be to create the whole at x equals three? Well, the factor that would create a whole at x equals three would be x minus three, right? That's, this is the factor where um, when, it, when you set it equal to zero, you get x equals three. This is the factor that would create that hole at x equals three. And to create a hole, I would need that factor to appear on both the top and the bottom so that it canceled. So with that in mind, let's move to our vertical asymptote next. If we have a vertical asymptote at x equals five, well, I know that I need to have a factor on the bottom to create the vertical asymptote. And to create a vertical asymptote at x equals five specifically, 
what factor do I need to have on the bottom? Well, I would need to have the factor of x minus 5 in order to get x equals 5 when I set it equal to 0. So I know that x minus 5, that's going to have to appear in the bottom to create a vertical asymptote there. All right, how about our x-intercepts? We have x-intercepts of 0, 0, and negative 1, 0. That means our x-intercepts happen at x equals 0 and x equals negative 1. Okay, well, to create an x-intercept of x equals 0, I'm going to have to have a factor of x minus 0, which is just x, right? And to create a, um, a, an x-intercept at x equals negative 1, I'm going to need to have a factor of x plus 1, so that when I set that equal to 0, I get negative 1 out of that. And where do these factors, the x and the x plus 1, have to be to create an x-intercept? Well, x-intercepts happen when you set the numerator equal to 0, so I know each of these factors has to appear in the numerator. So this guy has a hole at negative, or sorry, a hole at positive 3, and a vertical asymptote at x equals 5, and x-intercepts at 0 and negative 1. This has all of the things that I need it to, and um, I want you to leave it in factored form. Don't expand that out. All right, we will start with the next one, just identifying things from the graph on uh, Friday, and then we'll move into um, exponential functions. I'll see you on Friday, and I hope you have a great day.